The advent of smaller PC components with lower thermal and power requirements has created an increased interest in small form factor PCs. Moreover, leveraging super small SFX power supplies means a PC can now rival the size of some gaming consoles. Unfortunately, case manufacturers have apparently failed to keep up with consumer enthusiasm in this regard. Yes, there are a number of indie cases out there that can satisfy this newfound interest in micro-machines, but they're often plagued by delayed release dates, limited availability, and prohibitively high asking prices. Today's example exhibits no such restrictions, and as such, should be considered a godsend for small form factor PC enthusiasts. The Fractal Design Node 202 is a small form factor PC case that was designed with space efficiency in mind. It measures 377 by 82 by 330 millimeters, which works out to roughly 10.2 liters. The original Xbox One, for comparison, was a little over 7 liters, so it's definitely bigger than that, but at just 3.5 kilograms, it's pretty tiny. It's got a very simplistic design, there's really nothing special to talk about here. It's basically just a small rectangle with rounded corners. It has a reinforced matte and glossy plastic shell with an inner steel skeleton. Several features of this small form factor PC case help set it apart from the crowd. Namely, a graphics card riser, and this is so that the card can be mounted parallel to the motherboard, since mounting it perpendicular will increase the overall volume of the case. It has a stand for a vertical setup or rubber feet on the bottom for a horizontal layout. It also conveniently contains three dust filters to make sure the inside of your case stays clean. One goes over the power supply, one over the graphics card, and one over the CPU. A graphics card support arm is also included, so those longer graphics cards have somewhere to rest their overall weight and don't risk possibly damaging that PCIe slot. The I.O. is basic but sufficient. It has a power button that is illuminated with a white LED, two USB 3.0 ports, microphone and headphone 3.5mm jacks, and interestingly, no reset button. But of course, the biggest question with these small form factor PCs is what exactly can be supported, because you're having to sacrifice some options when you want to get down to something this size. First of all, only an SFX power supply will fit, and it can only be up to 130 millimeters in length. Now, there are two options with this case. One comes with a 450 watt SFX power supply, one does not, and you'll have to provide your own. Now, I, for one, think if you're okay using that power supply, it's actually a pretty good deal because these SFX power supplies are often hard to find, and for that reason, can be a little bit expensive. In an effort to keep things as small as possible, only many ITX motherboards are supported, and even then, you may want to check where the connections are located on the motherboard, because you'll, you'll want to plan out exactly how you want to route your cables. Not to say that uh, any layout wouldn't work, but some layouts on a, a mini ITX motherboard may be more convenient to work with than others. The CPU cooler support is definitely a point of contention because basically the overall size of that uh, case is limited to the, the width of the power supply. So you don't want the cooler to be any higher, any taller than, than where the power supply is going to stick out. So you have a very limited range of support. You can't actually use the boxed Ryzen coolers with this case. So keep that in mind. Even if you buy a Ryzen processor that uh, comes with a cooler, you're not even going to be able to use it. So this may influence your processor choice. You're starting to see how building in this case will influence a lot of other decisions in your PC build. So instead of going with a 1600, for example, maybe you want to go with a 1600X because you'll have to buy a cooler either way that's going to, to fit. Graphics card support is actually pretty generous. It leaves an entire uh, open area on the bottom of the case for graphics card support. So I'd say more than 90% of graphics cards are going to fit here. They can measure 310 millimeters in length by 145 millimeters in width by 47 millimeters in height. But keep in mind, you may want to go with a thinner profile card because it will begin to restrict airflow the closer you get to the edge of the case. And if you keep it thin enough, you can actually fit some 120 millimeter fans on the bottom. It supports two 120 millimeter fans over the graphics card. It fits standard 25 millimeter thickness fans if the graphics card is thinner than 35 millimeters. If your graphics card is thicker than that, then you'll have to go down to the, to the low profile 10 millimeter fans, which aren't going to be as effective at cooling. 
Drive support is a little bit tricky. You can obviously use an M.2 slot, which on a micro ATX board is likely going to be found on the back of the motherboard, or it has space for two two and a half millimeter drives. Those can be uh, more commonly SSDs or, or potentially a hard drive. However, in a recent build video, I showed how you can actually fit a three and a half millimeter drive into the Node 202 if you're willing to sacrifice a full length graphics card for something with uh, slightly lower thermal demands, maybe a single fan design card. Building in the Node 202 is an interesting experience because you can't assume anything will fit. Most mainstream components will fit in most uh, mid-tower cases and you don't really have to consider it. Everything needs to be taken into consideration here. Everything, the, the cooler, the length of the graphics card, the number of drives you want to use. So a lot of decisions are going to be influenced by using a small form factor PC case. And this critique is not exclusive to the Node 202. All small form factor PC cases have this problem. It is just a, a natural cause of being so tiny. It restricts the overall the options that you have. And you also have to carefully consider what order you put the parts in, because if you put parts in in the wrong order, then you're not going to be able to reach other parts to screw things in or to wire your, your power or SATA connectors. So you have to be very methodical about the whole thing. And it's a lot of fun to build in. So if you're looking for something that's going to save you space, then it's a good option. It's definitely a good option. And at less than $100, it's way cheaper than a lot of those indie cases out there. Well, thank you guys for watching. If you appreciated this video, then don't forget to give it a like and also subscribe if you want to see future videos down the road. I have some other case reviews incoming that if you like this case, you're definitely going to like this one I have coming down the road. So stay tuned and also check out um, the build video we did in this case, which is a lot of fun and also other case reviews that we've done recently. If you're interested in something maybe a little bit bigger, then I'd recommend watching those other case reviews and also check out the giveaways that we run every month. Uh, we have a really fun one coming up in December, so make sure that you're subscribed and ready for that. Thanks again for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next one.